this gospel reading always brings to mind for me the old saying, cleanliness is next to godliness. When I was a child, both of my grandmothers were fond of quoting that line, whether it was to make sure we cleaned up the kitchen immediately after cooking, to remember to wash behind our ears, and especially to always, always wash our hands before we had a meal. Coming to the dinner table after playing outside and forgetting to wash your hands is not only unsanitary, but it just might make God sad. Because, like the Bible says, cleanliness is next to godliness. Hmm. Except it actually doesn't say that. That's right, nowhere in Scripture does it say cleanliness is next to godliness. We can thank the 18th century preacher John Wesley for popularizing that phrase in a sermon entitled, Cleanliness is indeed next to godliness. While this line is not in the Bible, it's true that a major theme of Scripture is cleanliness versus uncleanliness. God called the Jewish people to be set apart for holiness, and this meant staying away from unclean food, animals, items, and people. Of course, it was not just the Jewish people who were exhorted by God to stay clean. Islam also labels certain actions, animals, and foods as haram or forbidden. And certain Hindu scriptures define entire groups of people as untouchable. Systems of dividing the world into clean and unclean are not unique to these religions even, and you can find purity, purity divisions in just about any culture or religion. And so today, in this reading from the Gospel of Mark, a group of devout Jewish leaders called Pharisees noticed that some of Jesus' disciples were eating without first washing their hands. Because Mark's ancient audience might not have known how important hand washing was as a religious practice, let alone sanitary practice, the evangelist mentions that Jews observe many traditions of cleaning, including washing cups, pots, and bronze kettles. And I'm thinking as I read this, and maybe you are, yeah, thank goodness they wash their dishes. After the Pharisees point out to Jesus that some of his disciples were not washing their hands before eating, he does not immediately side with the tradition of the elders as they might have thought he would. Nor, on the other hand, does he say, yeah, don't worry about it, don't wash your hands. But what Jesus does say is he calls the Pharisees hypocrites. He criticizes following religious practices that do not connect with the heart. And then he takes it a step further and says that there is nothing outside a person that can defile them. Rather, it's what we do from inside us that makes us clean or unclean. It's what is inside of us and what comes from us that really counts. Actions that come from the human heart either bring us down or lift us up. Of course, it's a good idea to wash your hands and do your dishes so you don't get sick from germs. No one living in the midst of a pandemic is going to argue otherwise. But what Jesus is saying is that those things don't necessarily make you a good person. Not observing cleanliness codes might make you grimy and get you sick, but it doesn't mean you're a bad person. A story. A few years ago, Giuliano and I traveled to Russia for a friend's wedding outside of Moscow. During our stay, we met so many people who were generous with their time and their hospitality. One afternoon, our host invited us to a special art show. It was a performance in the home of a well-regarded artist. 
one I did not know beforehand, uh, but still well regarded. And only about a dozen people were invited for the show. We, when we got to the apartment and opened the door, I had to keep my jaw from dropping because the inside of the apartment looked like a junkyard. Every inch of space was covered in clutter. And not just normal clutter, industrial clutter. There were pieces of wood, metal, and plastic everywhere. There were cords and wires hanging from the ceiling. The floor seemed unfinished, like carpet had been ripped up and then not replaced with anything. It was a space that seemed entirely incapable of being clean, and yet there by the door were the shoes of all the guests so that we would not track in dirt. <laughs> At least I was glad I was wearing socks that day. We were, brought into then, we were then brought into what must have been the living room at one time, but there were only chairs and crates lining the walls, facing what I presume to be the set for this evening's performance. There, there were drums, a jug of water, a tray of ice, wind chimes, an industrial-sized floor fan, microphones, and some kind of metal chandelier hanging from the ceiling. We squeezed into the warm, unair-conditioned space, and I felt my body tense and uncomfortable. The artist then began walking around in his bare feet, adjusting things here and there. He turned on the speakers, which began to hum loudly. He crumbled up paper and put it in various places, began pouring water and arranging ice. And before I'd even realized it, the performance had begun. You see, sound was his art, and he'd set in motion a series of events involving the water, the ice, the fan, the chimes, etc., that all created a little world of sound. It was strange, but beautiful. And I had been invited to experience the creativity of this artist in his own home, one that he'd transformed into a laboratory for exploring sound. So I was able to finally let my guard down a little bit, set aside my judgments about all the clutter that had turned out to be a part of his art, and experience the unfolding of this mini universe of sound that the artist had created and invited us to share with him. In the Gospel, Jesus is saying that what is inside us is what matters. What was inside the artist that day in Moscow was his hospitality and his creativity. And he gave us a gift by inviting us to share his home, his time, and his talent. It's what's inside that counts. It was a lesson to me that day. But it's also true that what's outside can and probably does affect how we feel inside. I would even argue that the easiest way to change how we're feeling inside is by making changes on the outside. For example, to help ourselves stay healthy on the inside, we can create an environment around us that is conducive to happiness. That doesn't mean just keeping it clean and tidy. Even more important than the things around us are the people around us. It's hard to stay healthy and happy when the people around you are not. Now, of course, that does not mean that we should cut ties with family and friends and acquaintances who are sad, stressed, or unhealthy. The love of Christ compels us to share and show compassion for people in need. Every person has dignity, and no one is untouchable, despite what various religions might have said throughout history. 
But when we spend our time giving of ourselves and service to others by, say, visiting a friend who's sick or helping someone who's in a hard place emotionally, we need to make sure that we also spend time doing things that give energy back to us. Helping people is a holy way of spending our time, and it's one that can be very satisfying. But it's also important to spend time just having fun, doing something creative, and participating in activities that renew and refresh us. Spiritual practices like church going, meditation and prayer, can also help create a clean and tidy space within us so we can be more giving of ourselves with others, so we can be more receptive to the gifts that other people have to offer us. So is cleanliness indeed next to godliness? Not exactly. Definitely not if it separates us from one another and makes us judgmental toward one another, but it can help us spiritually by making our surroundings a comfortable and happy place to be, we can make a difference inside ourselves. And then when we go outside of ourselves, when we feel good inside of ourselves and our surroundings, we're more likely to open the door and let people in. Please do wash your hands and do your dishes. It's just good for you and for everyone else. But it's even more important to take care of what's inside. So please take care of your hearts so that then we can go out and take care of one another and others in our community. Amen.